Today, I made a raspberry and coconut turnover. Well, no, mixed berry and coconut turnover, I should say. And as you can see, there is a lot of it. Uh, yeah, cool. Ah, oh, it is uh, Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. I just did something pretty spectacularly dumb. I um, was moving the heater, and while I was moving the heater, I accidentally unplugged my computer and stuff. Uh, I am supposed to be working at the moment, but I figure while I wait for it to load, because it likes to take its time, I'd give you a quick update. In fact, I believe this is the start of the vlog. I believe I forgot to do an introduction, so better late than never. Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to a latest uh, weekly reading slash writing vlog. I've read some more books, so I'm going to update you on those. I've also been having a little bit of a tidy. I made some nice food. Oh, it is time for me to log in. Bear with me. Yeah, for some reason my computer keeps doing this thing where uh, it does like a blue screen of death. If I, uh, like, basically I have to boot it up and then leave it for about five minutes to get itself, like, get itself sorted and then, then it runs okay. Um, Another thing I was thinking actually, uh, and I'll run this past you guys potentially, I might be changing the way I do uh, booktube videos. So I'm, I'm still probably going to do my vlog because I quite enjoy doing those. Um, but I might potentially be doing like less tags, uh, sorry, fewer tags. And uh, I want to like try and improve the quality I guess and um, you know just do a, a few bits with like multi-tracking and stuff so that I can sort of show you overs of the book and all these different bits and bobs, so it's not just me staring at a camera all the time. But uh, I think we're alright with the, the vlogs because they're pretty dynamic anyway. So uh, anyway, let me know if that sounds like a good idea to you guys. In the meantime, which order did I read these in? I don't know, I think I read them in this order. Uh, so I've got some more books to talk to you guys about. So I read uh, Woman Much Missed by Thomas Hardy, so this is Penguin Mini Modern 14. Moving, elegaic verse set in rural landscapes, penned by the grief-stricken Hardy after his wife's death. And uh, actually that makes more sense because for some reason I thought they were about his mum. And I was a bit weirded out by them to be honest. But uh, I'll read you one of them so you can get a feel for it. The Voice. Woman much missed, how you call to me, call to me, saying that now you are not as you were. When you had changed from the one who was all to me, but as at first when our day was fair. Can it be you that I hear? Let me view you then, standing as when I drew near to the town, where you would wait for me, yes, as I knew you then, even to the original air blue gown. Or is it only the breeze in its listlessness, travelling across the wet mead to me here, you being ever dissolved to one wistlessness, heard no more again far or near? The sigh faltering forward, leaves around me falling, wind oozing thin through the thorn from norward, and the woman calling. How did I manage to read that entire thing without making any mistakes? I'm quite impressed. I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5, maybe a 4 out of 5. Again, I'm, I prefer 20th century onwards poetry pretty much. However, I did enjoy Hardy and um, I want to read more Hardy. I think I've... Didn't he write Test of the D'Urbervilles? I read that, I think. In fact, I should probably... should probably get a copy of that. Uh, then I have here, Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, a play adapted by Richard R. George. Now what's super cool about this, and I didn't realise until I started reading it, is it has this in it, which is a Penguin Books Limited. Uh, this book will be published on 25th of October 1984. We have pleasure in enclosing this review copy and request your cooperation in not publishing any notice or review before the date shown above. So it's quite cool. It turns out to be a 35 year old ARC, which... Uh, and I'm guessing the fact that that slip is in there means that the person didn't actually read it. I did read it, I enjoyed it, I mean it's a pretty true adaptation to the Great Glass Elevator story. But I also liked it had things like uh, advice on how to make the props, lighting advice and whatnot. And that's not because it's teaching people who put on plays to suck eggs or anything like that. It's because it's designed for school teachers and school kids for you to put on a school play. Which I thought was a really nice touch. I uh, gave this a, a 4 out of 5 because you know, it wasn't Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but uh, <laughs> no, it was good. Okay, here we have Guy de Maupassant, female femme fatale, sorry, uh, number 15 in the Penguin Little Blacks. Uh, four sparkling 19th century tales of Parisian high society and rural life from the father of the modern short story. So I actually studied Guy de Maupassant at university for a short while, uh, only one or two stories I think, and neither of them were in this collection, which I was kind of hoping for, but uh, you know, it kind of gives me an excuse to get more of his back catalogue as well, you know? And uh, I 
probably I want to get his collected stories at some point I think I mean as they say he is the father of the modern short story he's the master of it he's like you know he, you know he's the Shakespeare of short stories or whatever so uh, four out of five here but I definitely will be reading some more and then we have Unspun Socks from a Chicken's Laundry children's poems by Spike Milligan I will read you one hopefully not a racist one that one's a long one so screw that that one is a racist one <laughs> Okay, we'll do buy gum. So this is based on when Sean, when five, said, uh, I want to kill the dentist. So Spike wrote this. Buy gum. Death to the dentist. Death to his chair. Death to his this might hurt. There, there, there. Death to his injections. Death to his nurse. Death to his amalgam. Curse, curse, curse. Death to his needle. Death to his drill. Death to his open wides. Kill, kill, kill. I was written in Hobart, Tasmania, May 1980. And it's got some illustrations and stuff. So yeah, it was amusing enough. It did have some pretty racist poems in there as well. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, it, it was a 3.5 because, I mean, he's still Spike Milligan and, you know, a product of the times, I guess. Although, bearing in mind a lot of it was written in the 80s, it felt like it was written in the 30s or something like that, or even earlier. So um, just be warned, maybe don't actually give this to children. But um, if you're a Spike Milligan fan slash aficionado, then certainly check it out. Uh, that, and that brings me up to this one, which is Suetonius Caligula, number 17. The original biography of the murderous, crazy, and incestuous Roman Emperor Caligula, who pronounced himself a god. So I'm about, just about two-fifths of the way through this, enjoying it so far. I mean, I'm taking it for what it is, and I actually really like the Romans. I find them fascinating. And the translation of this is... So what was it it said earlier? When he escorted Tiberius' funeral procession from Missinum to Rome, he was, of course, dressed in mourning, but a dense crowd greeted him ecstatically with altars, sacrifices and churches, and such endearments as star, chick, baby and pet. So I'm from the Midlands and I'm used to like people going, You are right, pet? Hey up, Chuck? So it just felt strange to read that in a biography of Nero. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. And uh, on that note, it looks as though my computer's working, so I'm gonna go and get some more work done. So I, I will see you soon. I made vegan quiche, asparagus quiche, and that's veganaise. And it looks amazing, and there's loads left. I'm going in. Hello, it is uh, Wednesday. I have had my driving lesson for today, it went all right. Um, I'm just cracking on with some work, really. It's actually a bit slow at the moment. I'm kind of worried about money, but that is by the by. Uh, I have some books to let you know, you let you guys know about. So I read How to Train Your Viking by Toothless the Dragon, translated from the Dragonese by Cressida Cowell. So this is one of the like How to Train Your Dragon spin-offs. It was out for World Book Day. And this one's interesting because it's all written from the point of view of Toothless the Dragon. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I gave it like a 3.5, maybe a 4 out of 5. Definitely worth checking out if you're a, a fan of the series. Then I read uh, Marco Polo, Travels in the Land of Serpents and Pearls, number 16. The intrepid Venetian traveller's observations of a 13th century India filled with lavish jewels, chaste princes, superstitions and naked armies. And yeah, it's basically like classical travel writing. It was also very easy to read. It was a pretty good kind of fairly modern translation. Uh, obviously a, a thing of historic interest as well. And uh, this was a 4 out of 5 for me. Really enjoyed it. And uh, it was interesting to see his view of the world, you know. Then I read The Day of the Dreader by Cressida Cowell. So this is another How to Train Your Dragon World book day book. I got both of these from charity shops. This one is written in the style of a normal book. And so uh, it's different to the one that's kind of written from Toothless's point of view. But what's cool here is we have uh, baby dragons in it as well. So uh, yeah, it was very cute. And um, yeah, another 3.5, 4 out of 5. And then we have Suetonius Caligula, number 17. The original biography of the murderous, crazed, and incestuous Roman Emperor Caligula, who pronounced himself a god. And uh, what I would say about this is that um, it's remarkably modern feeling in terms of the translation. So I think it used words like chick and duck and pet and stuff, which are quite, kind of English, uh, you know, well, I, I'm familiar with those terms kind of from the Midlands here in, in uh, the UK. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a bit of a juxtaposition there in terms of the language and the subject matter, but I always find uh, the Romans really fascinating, and Caligula was obviously absolutely nuts. So, um, yeah, this was a pretty interesting read, uh, another four out of five for me. And now I am reading uh, Jason and Medea, 
uh, by Apollo Ap Apollonius of Rhodes, <laughs> number 18. A heroic tale of love, anguish, and the golden fleece from the ancient Greek epic Argonautica. So I'm familiar with uh, the movie Jason and the Argonauts, which tells the same story. It's obviously Greek legend. And um, yeah, I'm in, really enjoying this so far as well. I'm on a roll with these at the moment, so I'm pretty happy about that. So I'll probably finish this today. Uh, so yeah. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that I've been reading Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe as my bedtime book. I'm about 100 pages in of about 2.30. Actually really enjoying it so far. So um, yeah, it might even make my top books of the quarter. We will see. So yeah, on that note, as I don't really have any work to do, I'm off to do some editing. Uh, <laughs> somebody pay me to book you, please. All right, I'll see, I'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye. He's helping me with my work, aren't you, Biggs? Yes. So I attempted to make baklava, which I'm not even sure what it is, but it looks good and it looks kind of like the recipe, so I think I did it right. Hey Google, pause. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm listening to, uh, it's my friend's Boxing Day grime mix from about three years ago, but it just happened to pop up on my unwatched YouTube videos. So uh, I decided to watch it. My hair's all fluffy because I had a shower earlier as well, but there we go. Um, okay, so quick update. I finished reading uh, Apollonius of Rhodes, Jason and Medea, number 18, a heroic tale of love, anguish, and the golden fleece from the ancient Greek epic Argonautica. Really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I've actually, I've put on um, Jason and the Argonauts to download so I can watch that as well. Um, the old movie from like the 60s, which is where I'm familiar with the story from. I will say it probably is going to make more sense to you if, you re if you've if you seen the, the movie or if you know the story of Jason and the Golden Fleece before you go into it. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a solid 4 out of 5 for me. And that brings us on to my current read, which is How to Steal a Dragon Sword by Cressida Cowell. And I will be honest, I'm kind of reading this because um, it will be nice and short and quick and to the point. So you can see I've already made a big dent. Um, so I'm going to read this and then I'm going to read the Communist Manifesto. So yeah. Alright, I'm going to go and eat some baklava. I made orange and chia seed muffins and they're a bit square because they overflowed out of the pan a bit, but they look lovely. Biggie's down here. He's sitting on his pillow, aren't you, Biggs? Uh, he'll sit in the background, I guess. I just want to quickly update you on some books. So it's Thursday. Uh, yep, and then this weekend I have somebody coming over. I don't know why my hair looks like this. Um, so I might not update too much, but I will do my best. Uh, actually, I'm going out to uh, plant some Prosecco, like vegan food evening, on uh, uh, Saturday night, so I'll probably take this along to that. But anyway, I have actually, speaking of vegan food, let's start with this. I finished uh, Vegan on the Go by Jerome Eckmeyer and Daniela Lace. So the way I tell when a cookbook is finished, basically every time I get one, I go through the entire thing and I make a list of all the recipes I want to try. And then I kind of methodically go through each of the recipes, trying them out. I copy the ones that I like into like my master list of recipes. And then, um, yeah, and then once I've tried every recipe in the book, I consider it to be complete. I'm going to put my hat on because I feel self-conscious because I have like a weird centre parting. Then we have here, How to Train Your Dragon, How to Steal a Dragon Sword by Cressida Cowell, which was my main read. I finished reading this. It only took a couple of days. My only real gripe with it is that it ended on a cliffhanger. And for me, I get most of my How to Train Your Dragon books from charity shops. So I don't necessarily read them in order. And so far, they've all worked pretty well as standalones. But this one's kind of booked the trend, you know? So, um... Yeah, I still gave it a 4 out of 5 though, and the vegan recipe book as well, they're both fours out of 4 out of 5s. And I just really love this series, I know it's aimed at kids, but I don't care, I am a kid at heart. Okay, and now, I am just reading Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels' The Communist Manifesto, uh, Penguin Mini Model number 20. This revolutionary summons to work has transformed the modern world and still shapes millions of lives today. Uh, it's a famous book, I'm about two thirds of the way through it. It's got some interesting ideas in it. I kind of don't know how well they work out in practice and I think history in, as well has also sort of shown that, but you know, interesting food for thought certainly and um, yeah. So that is that. It is also half 12 now in the morning. I have a driving lesson tomorrow, so there's that too. Uh, I think that's it. I made some nice food. Uh, it's all been good, hasn't it Biggs? It's been all right. Yeah. 
So I finished reading the Communist Mani Manifesto. <laughs> I just realised I got my window open and someone just walked past, so they probably think I'm like planning a revolution here. Uh, we probably should have a revolution. You know, this has got some good bits, some bad bits, but uh, something, something needs changing, man. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to talk too much about this because uh, I think it's a fairly, fairly well-known book. Then I read, and I'm going to say I've finished reading this because I'm about four pages from the end, of Trimalchio's Feast by Petronius, a bitingly comic portrayal, sorry, a bitingly comic portrait of the vulgar Trimalchio and his debauched, drunken Roman banquet from the outrage, outrageous Latin masterpiece, the Satyricon. So I now want to read the Satyricon because this has been very enjoyable, particularly this translation. Like, there was one, one quote where a guy said, if she doesn't sit down, I'm shagging off. And I'm like, this was written in... 60 AD or something, so uh, fairly inventive uh, translation from the Latin there, but yeah, I enjoyed it, it was very good. And uh, now I'm going to read uh, this, which is uh, Space Ranger by Isaac Asimov, so it's the first, uh, what's his name, David, David Star Space Ranger novel, and I've actually read like the fifth one, so I've read these out of order, but I don't think it matters too much. To the train station, possibly via Tesco and the post office, all right. Bye, cat. Yes. Okay. Took in. Enjoy. Yum, yum, yum. Melon! Oh. Cheers! Yum, yum, yum. I hope you're hungry. Oh, back at the art centre for the Sunday Jam. And me and Dave are going to do some songs.
for her. April's pregnant! Yay! They're a handful, but we're really excited. <laughs> okay, so it is Monday. Um, it's actually a Monday evening. Uh, I got up at quarter to seven uh, this morning um, because um, Beck stayed over this weekend, so I had to walk her to the train station so she could get to work. Um, I finished reading Asimov, um, Space Ranger. So this is the first book in his Space Ranger series. It was actually um, uh, published under the pseudonym of Paul French. And it was, follows this guy called David Stark, the Space Ranger. This one actually follows how he gets his name. Basically, he goes to Mars to investigate the, the fact that um, there are these um, big farms that are growing a lot of the food that's then being shipped to Earth. And... Um, for some reason people start dying after eating Martian food and then these threats start coming in and so David Starr goes to investigate and uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to give this like a 4.5 out of 5. The um, It was only like 140 pages as well and I really like this edition. The um, the other David Starr book that I've read as well was really good so I, I just think I really like this series in general but um, this was a great opener to it as well and if you're into Asimov I suggest uh, checking it out. So um, yeah, so I finished reading that and um, also over the weekend, I think I did say in the vlog I, I, I'd pretty much finished reading Trimalchio's Feast by Petronius, but I definitely have finished it now. I'm also about 15 pages away from the end of Robinson Crusoe, which is my bedtime book, but um, I'll talk about that when I finish it. And uh, I'm probably going to do a review of that. I might also do a review of, um, of uh, Space Ranger as well. And now I am reading Blueprints for Revolution by Sorja Popovich and Matthew Miller. And this is basically sort of non-fiction about how different revolutions have happened in history. It's written by a guy who helped to uh, run the revolution that toppled uh, Slobodan Milosevic in Serbia. I want to see Serbia. Yeah, Serbia. Yeah, it was Serbia. Excellent. I'm doing good. Um, so as you can see, I've flagged out bits of this and I might also do a review of this. This is... Um, oh! dropped it. This is a, a real life buddy read, so again I'm uh, buddy reading this with Bex, who is, uh, you probably saw her face potentially in, in the vlog. So over the weekend as well, um, I didn't take any footage of it, but I went charity shopping and got a load of books. So here is a sneak preview of the stack of books. I will of course be doing um, my haul as well, so they will be in that. And in fact, that's what I'm off to film now, and then I'm going to add all the books to Goodreads. After the uh, browsing the charity shops in the evening, we went to an event called Plants and Prosecco, which was basically um, vegan food with some, um, you know, vegan alcoholic drinks as well. From this lady who runs a food van as well, a vegan food van. And that was really good. The food was great. I'm sure it looked excellent uh, on the videos. Uh, the pictures of it were quite good as well. And uh, and then on Sunday we went to the uh, Sunday Jam, which is at the Arts Centre just around the corner, and I played some tunes for my my friend Dave as part of the Ilk. So yeah, and now it's Monday and I'm back to work. And on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you and pick things up in the next reading vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books we talked about in uh, this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.